You always know when things go crazy right before service that God wants to speak to you. You know that God wants to do something. How many believe that this morning? Amen. 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 Give him praise one more time. Second Kings chapter 6, Old Testament today, 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, we find everything from an axe head to a donkey head in 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, many, many stories in there will be in the middle of the chapter. We're going to begin with verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 6. We're going to begin with verse 8. When you have it, we'll stand for the reading of God's word. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. How many feel like that the enemy's warring against you? Uh, yeah. uh, eight people. How many feel like the enemy's warring against you? Yeah. There you yeah. go. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And I was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city about, both with horses and chariots. If he tells us that twice, probably important. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my masters, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when he had come down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me. And I will bring you to the man whom you see. But he led them to Samaria. Let us stand when you bless the reading of the word. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you very much. I'm going to give you a message in the message before I start my message, if that's okay. A little message in the message before I start my message. Um, Israel is not under a good king right now. Israel is not under good leadership. Now, some of you may not like the leadership our country's under, whether that be Congress or whether that be the White House. But here's what we find about Elisha in this instance. Hear me in this little nugget before we get into the word. Elisha continued to honor God for the nation of Israel. Elisha continued to tell the king, don't go there, you're going to get in trouble. And it says not once, not twice, but multiple times that the king literally, he saved the king even though he didn't like the king. I'm really excited to watch all the patriotic stuff on social media from you guys because whether we like what's going on in our government or not, we live in the greatest country on earth. Amen? And Elisha literally was protecting the king, even though the king was not a good guy. Even though he was not living for God, Elisha continued. I want to say this to you. Fight for your country 
country, not against the leaders that are there now, but stand before God fighting for your amazing country that you live in. Give God praise one more time. Elisha understood that while he didn't like everything that was going on, this is his country and he needed to take care of it. We need to fight for what God has given us. I tell my kids, my, you know, they, sometimes, you know, and I don't know about you, but I drove old junk cars most of my life. I still got a 93 Chevy truck out there. And don't you call it junk. I love my truck. But I clean it out inside every single week. Why? God blessed me with it. Well, I wish God would give me a new vehicle. Well, clean the one you got. Maybe God would bless you with more. Take care of what God's given you. Fight for what God's given you. That's what Elisha was doing. I'm moving on. We're talking about Elisha and his servant today. And the Syrian army is coming against him. Now, in order to get there, here's what we've got to decide. We've got to decide why he's coming against him. So in order to look at that real quickly, let me look at it like this. Here is the Syrian army, and he's going to attack Israel. And every time he goes to attack Israel, they're not there anymore. They're gone. So he looks, he brings his men together, and he looks at his men, and he says, Who is the spy among us? Who is rooting for the other two? Who keeps selling me out? And they said, Nobody. There's no one here that is against us. It's the man of God, and every time you tell us what to do in your bedchamber, in your private area, God speaks to him, and he tells the king of Israel, and he's protecting them supernaturally. You don't have a spy. And so the king of Syria says, and I'm paraphrasing, well then, let's find that guy. Because I can't beat Israel as long as they're one step ahead of me. So let's find Elisha. And take him out. So he said, where's Elisha? Now, I, I, I picture these things in my mind. And, and all week I've been going over this scripture and I've been digging and I've been in my brain and I think about all this stuff and I'm thinking, that means the more I stand up for God, the more the enemy's coming after me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So Elisha, the Syrian army, instead of going after Israel, they're going after Elisha. And here he is in Dothan. And he's there with his servant. And they surround the city. And it says that twice. And if you break that down, it literally means they, in, they covered the entire city. They surrounded it. And the servant gets up early. He goes out and he sees that they're trapped. And he goes back to Elisha and he yells to Elisha, Help! What are we going to do? They're out to get us and they're everywhere. You know what the United States military would say? They got us surrounded. They're right where we want them. <laughs> right? <laughs> the enemy's got me surrounded. He's right where I want him. He can't get away now, right? <laughs> but the enemy had the servant's mindset to the place where fear had gripped him. How many born-again men and women of God that when they see the enemy, they see the enemy and it feels like they're surrounded by him, their focus begins to be on the enemy and fear begins to grip them. I need two volunteers. I will select you if you don't volunteer. Uh, you volunteer today? Come on. Come on. She won't be the enemy or Elisha? Come on, Tina. All right, you sit there. So here's what you've got to do, okay? You're the enemy. Tina, you're the enemy. All right. So look at me. Elisha is costing you time, money, energy, and will not let you defeat the enemy. He is your sole important thing that you need to take out right now. I need you to focus on him and nothing else. Okay? This enemy is out to get you. The enemy is out to get you. That doesn't mean you can check to see how big the fans are going. Because he's looking for an opening. So you've got to keep an eye on him, okay? Mike can do your thing for me, boss. Now you focus on each other. Y'all are mortal enemies. And the enemy says, or, or Elisha's servant says to him, Elisha's servant says to him, what are we going to do? The enemy's got us surrounded. My finances are 
in destruction. My health is in destruction. My family's falling apart. The enemy is destroying everything I got. And Elisha says to him, Fear not. Don't be afraid. The one that is with us, those that are with us are greater than those that are against us. How many of you will admit it? Sometimes you feel like you're fighting the battle by yourself. You don't feel like there's anybody out there. Let me show you what's happening. Let me show you what's happening. The enemy's gotten against you so much that you've lost focus on everything but the enemy. So you're focusing directly on the enemy. The enemy's focusing directly on you. And then the Bible tells us that he says, open his eyes, Lord. This is where I think I've missed it too many times. <coughs> too many times I've prayed, oh God, put a hedge of protection around me. Protect me, Lord, protect me. Oh God, I need help, I need help. Protect me, Lord, protect me. Elisha didn't pray protection. Elisha said, show him that the ones that are with us are greater than the ones that are against us. Because out of your own lifting of hands, you admit that sometimes you forget the battle because your focus is on the enemy. You forget that there is a multitude of angels there to fight for you. You're not in this alone. When we get our mind on the enemy and we get focused, and guess this though, this is the beautiful part. The enemy wasn't looking at the ones behind them either. They were focused on Elijah. Elisha. When you feel like the enemy is focused on you, if you can see with your spiritual mind, you ought to grin from ear to ear. Because he's lost focus on the fact that God's army is about to take care of this. See, we've so focused on what's going on, on the enemy in us, and the enemy beside us, and the enemy in front of us, that we've lost focus on the fact that God is still in control, and those that are with me are far greater than those that are against me. Yeah. Let me get back to my notes. Lord, I'm three pages back. Elisha prays, I'm your servant. He doesn't pray, send those angels up on the hill to kill all these guys. He doesn't pray, send all those to do. He says, show him that we're not alone. You know what I started praying this week? God, show me that I'm not alone. When all Hades is breaking loose in my life, show me that I'm not alone, Lord. Show me that you've got warring angels all about me and that I'm not in this thing alone. That I've got someone watching my back while my focus has gotten lost on the enemy. So many times when we come under attack, we get focused on the enemy and we want to drill and we want to fight and we want to do everything we can. And God says, just open your eyes and look. Forget about the enemy for a season. And look at what I have surrounding you. Now watch what happens. He, he says, open the eyes of my servant. If Tom was here, I'd have him beside you because he's a servant. Right? No, we can't. Uh, and the servant's eyes are open, and they see the chariots and those things. And then the scripture says that the, the army came down. That word came down literally means prostrate. It means they, they went to their knees is what it means, actually. And he says, Lord, blind the eyes of my enemy so that he can't affect me. And then he says to the enemy, and maybe it's a little white lie, maybe it's deception. I guess technically he didn't lie. He said, I'll show you where the guy's at. Follow me. In other words, there's a whole army around the city, right? He says, take his hand, take his hand, take his hand, and I want to take your hand. Come on, I want to take you to the guy. All right? So he takes him to Samaria, where the king of Israel is waiting. And he says, do you want me to kill them? And Elijah says, no. And he opens their eyes. He calls out to God. He says, open their eyes and let them see where they're at. 
They don't want you to feed them and send them away. How many times do we get caught up in trying to destroy our enemy when God wants to just show him how big he really is? Fed them, sent them away, and the scripture says they never came back again. All right. So let's look at our sermon this morning. You're the enemy, right? Fake, green. It's hard for you not to say, oh, yeah. You raised your hand to be an enemy. I saw you. So, so you got to growl right now. I think you're Tony the Tiger or something. Growl. I don't know. Your focus is on the enemy that's coming against you. Your focus is on destroying him. The thief came but to kill, steal, and destroy, right? What is the point of the message? That we need to see that God has our back? That we need to see that there's angels with us? That we need to see. The title of my message is See. The enemy should have been looking at what you had going on outside of where you're at. What God had going on on your behalf. You should have realized that he ain't alone. If he can tell you everything that's going on in your army, he ain't alone. Maybe that we just need to see things for what they are spiritually instead of physically. But I want to bring something else to you today. I want you to catch something else today that God showed me. And to be honest with you, I've been asked this week, why have you been so quiet? God's been working on me. How many are thankful that we're not alone in the battle? Say amen. amen. How many caught what I said a minute ago? Amen. Elisha didn't need the angel. They did nothing. And if you break it down in the Hebrew, you'll see what I'm talking about. They didn't come. He didn't ask God to send down the army out there and blind those people. He called to God himself and said, blind the people. And the scripture tells us that God blinded the people. Can I say this to somebody today? You're waiting on God to deliver you when he put the deliverer inside of you. He's already. Because the God that's in you is big enough to defeat your enemy. That's right. We keep waiting on the right person to lay hands on us. We keep waiting <laughs> for the right sermon or the right song. And I praise God for the right song and the right sermon and every man that's ever laid hands on me. But Elisha never called on an angel to do anything. He spoke to God on his behalf, and because of his faithfulness, God moved on Elisha's behalf. Yeah. How many Christians today are not stepping out in faith because the enemy's focus? That's all you can see is the enemy. That's all you can see is the enemy. Isn't she pretty? Hey. That's a joke, but reality, for some of you folks out there, the enemy's pretty. Stay away from her or him. Leave that alone. Catch this. I'm not alone in the battle, but the God that's in me can defeat the enemy with one word from me. But I'm praying, God, protect me, take care of me in the storm. I'm begging God to do all these things, and Elisha said, Blind them, Lord. He spoke to God to touch the enemy. So many times, I've read this story a thousand times. I've heard Brother Mark Scott would preach it differently than I preached it this morning. Praise God that we see different things. But I've never caught this when it says that they came down. And I begin to break that down in the original language. It actually doesn't say they did a thing. It actually says, if I understand it correctly, that they bowed before God. And Elisha, out of his mouth, blessings and curses come from your mouth. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. So many men and women of God are defeated today and the enemy is destroying everything around us. And if we are just faithful and speak life, 
except God to defeat you. It's nice to have backup, but you don't need it. It's nice to call the prayer chain, but there is an anointing inside of you. There is a power inside of you that created the universe and everything in it. The creative power of God resides inside of you if you're a born-again child of God. Stop! Stop! Stop letting the enemy shut you around! God, he's big. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, oh, God. They say there's no care for him. Oh, 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 oh. I'm never going to. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. You ever wonder if God just says, shut up and just ask me to fix it? Put the baby in the bed, close the door. He'll stop crying after a while. And when he tells me what he wants, I'll fix it. back and look at your last 10 social media posts. Did God get glory or did the enemy? Whose name was mentioned more? The enemy or God? Look at your prayers for the last few days. Do we tell God how big the enemy is or are we telling the enemy how big our God is? He was surrounded. And all I can think is Elijah saying, why did that boy not cook breakfast? He's worried about an enemy out there that my God already has under control. Now I want to take this one step further and I'll hush. Elisha, I love you. And you've got the power of God on your life. But I got something you didn't have. I got the blood of Jesus. I got authority to use Christ's name that you didn't have in the Old Testament. I've got power of eternity to speak in the creator of the universe's name. If he knew, have you ever just stopped and looked what words do in the, in the Bible? Sun, stand still. Well, that mess up the whole universe, Joshua. You know, I understand that you need to fight in the daylight. What if I just give you headlights? Joshua said, son, stand still. And the scripture says that God listened to the voice of man and commanded the sun to stand still in the sky. Read it. You're losing battles that God wants you to win. You're being defeated when God... Now, I'm not telling you that this is going to work for every Cadillac you want, but here's what I am telling you. Elisha was faithful and he knew when he needed God he could call on him and expect him to move. I'm calling out the truth that I just saw on the mountain. He's calling on God saying, boys, we might need you later, but right now it's not important. See, church, this morning, we need to learn to see with our spiritual eyes. We need to stop looking at the problem in the physical and start seeing with our spiritual eyes. We need to start seeing. You say, well, that worked in the Bible. Let me tell you thousands and thousands and thousands of testimonies. Steve Holder, worship leader. Him and his wife on vacation back when all the carjackings were going on in Florida. 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 Guy comes up to the window, sticks a gun in Steve's face, and he says, I'm going to kill you. And his wife said, Jesus! He said, shut up! She said, Jesus! 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 And the guy went, ah! And took off running. People were dying by carjacking, and she proclaimed the name of Jesus, and the carjacker ran. We can justify having no power until Jesus splits the eastern sky and get to heaven. We can walk defeated from now on. 
We can start walking in holiness and righteousness. Notice I qualified that. Before he talked about him speaking to God, you got to walk in. You can't just proclaim, God, I'm in the middle of a house of prostitution, but I need your help to protect me from all the diseases in here. It doesn't quite work like that. I know I'm going to get in trouble, right? But Elisha was honoring God in what he did, and when he needed God to move, he didn't need an army to go with him. What he needed was to speak life into his situation. What he needed was to believe in the power of God that resides inside him. And I've been praying, God, will you protect? Will you protect? And I'm not saying don't. I think we should. I think we're required to. But there comes a time when you say, God, move on my behalf. And destroy my enemy. I wish God would help me with this addiction. I wish God would help me with this addiction. Put it down, give it to God, and walk away. By the way, fear is an addiction. Anger is an addiction. Malice is an addiction. You don't believe that? You've never been mad at nobody. Because the one you're mad at, when you see their name on Facebook, you start growling again. You see the picture of the flowers in their yard on Instagram? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope all the flowers die! <laughs> Merely in her hand, all their old flowers. <laughs> tell me you got deer in your yard and tell me if they got babies, I can't shoot them. <laughs> Can I paraphrase real quick? If I'm Elisha, here's what I'm saying to the servant. Those that are with us are greater than those that are against us. Lord, will you show him but also let him know we're not going to need him? Because you got this. Because you got this. So let me ask you a question this morning. How many need God to got this? How many need God to do this? First of all, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you guys can sit down. Thank you. Give him a hand. Savior, you don't have this power that lives inside of you. But you can today. But I believe there are some born again faithful men and women of God that have been defeated for so long that God said, when will you step up and have me take care of this? When will you start speaking in faith in your prayers what you need me to do rather than saying, hold my hand till I get through this, say, why don't you calm this storm? some prayers this week. One of them was, God, am I being punished? And he began to show me things. And then I had to repent for even asking. The God of all creation lives in you if you're a born again child of God. And I believe if you want to know the truth that he gets disgusted with us, let the enemy run over us every day. I think he's tired of watching the enemy run over us. I think it's time we need to step up. I want to pray with you today. Not that you need me. 38 years at the pool of Bethesda is long enough. But, 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 but nobody will help me. Get in the water. <laughs> Take a tube of 
for and crack everybody else. <coughs> I watched a man in MotoGP. I know y'all don't know what that is. Somebody motorcycle racing for us nuts that like that stuff. And he qualified for the German GP yesterday. And they said, now this is hard. And he pulls his bike up and he leans over on one leg and they come and they hold the bike and they help him off the bike and they hand him his crutches. And they help him walk because he can't walk on his own. How determined are you to see God move in your life? Well, I'm going to go to church once every seven months whether I need it or not. <laughs> I'm going to pray every other Sunday over my chicken nuggets. <laughs> just say this to you. You serve a serious God. If you'll get serious with him, he'll get serious in your situation. It's time that we begin to be serious with God. It's time that we begin to walk holy. It's time that we begin to walk righteous. And even if we don't like what's going on, honor God anyway. And then when you call on him to defeat your enemy, Ask him to show you those that are with you and then say thanks for having us back up. We got this. You and I got this. Stay with me if you will. I know from just from the last two days, oops, things I missed. That's okay. We'll get them next time. I know that some of you are going through some ugly stuff right now. And I also know the enemy's telling you, it'll be okay. You don't need to go out there. You to, oh, trust me. Two or more gathered and asked. We need to literally be about the Father's business. And we can't when our focus is on the enemy. We've got to get our focus and see the bigger picture. I don't know what your needs are. If you need Christ, come. But other than needing Christ as salvation, if you have a need in your life, as they begin to play, come and let God be God in your life. Stop losing for fear, pride, or anything else and start being on the side of the one that won it all. Father, touch your people. Meet the needs of their physical life, their spiritual life, their emotional life, and their soul. In your precious name, amen.